Hello, I'm so happy to see you again. I've been missing you guys. Okay, let's sing two songs first before we talk about more about letter X. Let's sing two songs about friendship because you're going to learn in a few minutes that X, Xavier Fox, X, 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 really likes to be with his friends. So before we talk about that, let's sing two songs about friendship. The first one we're going to sing is I Like You, There's No Doubt About It. And then the second song we're going to sing is our alligator song. Remember that's the one about being friends with an alligator? And it goes alligator. Remember that? Okay. All right. So stand up and let's go over I Like You, There's No Doubt About It first because we haven't, we haven't maybe heard that one in a while. Okay. It goes like this. One, two, three. I like you, there's no doubt about it. I like you, there's no doubt about it. I like you, there's no doubt about it. You are my good friend. You like me, there's no doubt about it. You like me, there's no doubt about it. You like me, there's no doubt about it. You are my good friend. And then remember the alligator one before we start the music goes like this. Bum, ba, bum, ba, bum, bum, alligator, 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 alligator. Can be your friend, can be your friend, can be your friend too. Woo! Can be your friend, can be your friend, can be your friend too. Woo! The alligator is my friend. The alligator is my friend. He likes to dance and flirt. You know that one? Okay. All right. So it goes from there. So first we'll do I like you and then the alligator. Okay. Stand up. I like you, there's no doubt about it. I like you, there's no doubt about it. I like you, there's no doubt about it. You are my good friend. You like me, there's no doubt about it. You like me, there's no doubt about it. You like me, there's no doubt about it. You are my good friend. Okay, alligator, you ready? Alligator, 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 can be your friend, can be your friend, can be your friend too, woo, can be your friend, can be your friend, can be your friend too, woo, the alligator is my friend, the alligator is my friend, can be your friend too, and he can be your friend too. If only you could understand. If only you could understand. Don't wear him as Point your shoe. feet. Don't wear him as your shoe. Alligator. Alligator. Ha ha alligator. Ah ha alligator. Alligator. Can be your friend, can be your friend, can be your friend too. Woo! Can be your friend, can be your friend, can be your friend too. Woo! The alligator is my friend. The alligator is my friend. He likes to dance and flirt. He likes to dance and flirt. If only you could understand. If only you could understand. Don't wear him as a skirt. Don't wear him as a skirt. Alligator. Alligator. Ha ha alligator. Ha ha alligator. Can be your friend, can be your friend, can be your friend too. Woo! Can be your friend, can be your friend, can be your friend too. Woo! The alligator is my friend. The alligator is my, my friend. friend. He likes to sing and dance. He likes to sing and dance. If only you could understand. If only you could understand. Don't wear him as your pants. Don't wear him as your pants. Alligator.
so fun. Okay, let's come closer together. And I'm gonna explain to you why I chose a friendship song for Xavier Fox. X, X, X. Why would I choose a friendship song? And I'm gonna tell you why. Usually, in words, we don't hear X by itself. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever gone to a new place with just your mom and dad where you didn't really know anybody very well and you felt a little shy and people might come up to you and ask you what your name is and you don't feel like saying your name because you feel shy. Sometimes I don't even feel like saying my name sometimes because I feel shy. But if you go someplace new and you're with a friend, sometimes it's a little easier to say your name because your friend is standing next to you and they're going to say their name. So when they say their name, it kind of gives you a little nudge that, oh, I can say my name. Well, that's kind of how X is in words. Let me show you what I mean. First, let's make our bodies like an X, okay? Okay, you make your body like an X how you think it would be. I'll give you a second. Okay, you ready? Get your body like an X. And then I'm going to hold up the picture of what the child in the picture is doing. See how close you are to what they did. And then if it's not the same, you can do what they're doing, and then you'll have two different ways to make X. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Okay, there's X. Now, you, so you just spread your legs out open and your arms out open. And another thing you could do is you could do this exact same position on the floor. So, X, X, X. And then X, I've already done it a little bit, but you can do it with your hands really easily or your arms because you can cross your arms like this, you know, if it's going down the slide and down the slide, X, X, X. You can do it with just your fingers, X, X, X. Now, there are a lot of words that start with X, where X doesn't feel shy and says its name, but we don't use them very often. The words that we use often that start with X, only about two do you hear a lot. And the first one is, I'm going to show it to you. The first one that you might hear a lot is the word xylophone. And even in xylophone, even though it starts with X, it sounds like a Z. It sounds like X is saying its friend's name, Z, xylophone. But it doesn't start with a Z. It starts with an X. And you can see really closely right there. See right there where my finger is? X. Xylophones make music. Xylophones make music. So over the next few years, when you're in big school, you might get xylophone as a spelling word, and you can remember, oh, although I hear Z, it's actually X. All right, that's one. The other one that we hear a lot of is this word. Well, I'll show you the picture first. I'll show you the picture first, what it is, and you'll say, I know what that is. Okay, it's a picture of an X-ray. There's a boy showing the picture of the inside of his body, his bones, his his rib cage and his spinal column. And then on the other side is the picture of a girl showing a picture of her rib cage and you can look through and see her spinal column as well. A picture of your bones taken on the outside of your body but it goes through your skin, that picture is called an X-ray. And we know that starts with X. And this is what it looks like when it's written. It looks like this, X-ray. You see the X right there? Okay, X-ray. Those are really the only two instances where X, where you're going to hear those words a lot, and you'll use those words in your life a lot, where X is feeling brave. Usually, X is very shy and wants to have a letter friend with him before he feels brave enough to say his name. So X is kind of our shy letter. And one of the friends that X likes to hang out with a lot, if letters had play dates, X would invite E eh over all the time. So, th 
This is letter X playing with eh, 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 eh. Do you see up here? See up here? E, eh, eh, eh. The short E is eh, X. And then this word is exit. So when E gives, when the sound of eh gives X some confidence, he can say the word eh, exit. Do you hear the X in that one? It's almost as if eh is standing next to X and saying, hey, Quick, say your name, say your name. I'm saying mine, eh, ux, eh, ux. And there's a purple cat going out a door because an exit is often a door. You go out a door for an exit. Okay, that's what. Then another word that X can make with eh, its friend, is a really big word. You may not have heard it very much, but it's a fun one. It's called extraordinary extraordinary and I have the big surprise eyes emoji because if something is extraordinary it doesn't happen very often it's just oh that's extraordinary and usually it's good extraordinary it could be bad extraordinary but usually it's something good as if oh my goodness my friends threw me a great big surprise party it was extraordinary or a purple cat would be extraordinary there's a purple cat. If you saw a purple cat in real life, you would say, I saw a real purple cat. It was extraordinary. That means you usually don't see that very often. Okay, so exit, extraordinary. And then another word that X says its name because it's feeling so brave when it's hanging out with, with E is exciting, exciting. And I have balloons and a cupcake for that one because it might be about a birthday party and birthday parties are very exciting. So if letters had play dates, X would invite eh over all the time and they could make so many words together. Another friend that X really likes to hang out with a lot, two friends, are Francie Fish, F, 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 and Bubba Bear, B, B, B. And in this picture, is the word fox and box. And then, so there's X hanging out with its friend, Francie Fish, and its other friend, Ollie Octopus. Ollie Octopus says, ah, ah, ah. And then down here, he's with his friend, Bubba Bear and Ollie Octopus. So up here, he had Francie Fish and Ollie Octopus over for play dates, and they made the word Fox, and you can really hear X. He's feeling extra brave because he has his two friends standing with him. And then in this one, he says, B ox, and you can really hear X in there too. Box, because he has his two friends standing with him. Sometimes the more people you know in a situation, the more talkative you feel. And so we can really hear X well when he's in words with his friends. So, and this, is Fox on Box, and it's a, a picture from the story that you're gonna, that Mrs. Reed, I think, is gonna read to you this week in our at home learning called Fox in Socks. And you hear lots of X's in there because X is hanging out with his friends all the time. So when you, when she reads you that book, maybe you can freeze frame it and look to see which friends X is hanging out with in those words. Okay, so. Try to be thinking or listening this week for when you hear words, use your ears, for when you hear words that where X is with a friend, exciting, um, example, exam, as different words you're going to hear at home and see if you can hear X hanging out with his friends. So I thought it would be fun today if we, if we read a book about friends since X really likes to be with his friends. I thought we'd read a book about friends and this book about friends is called Strictly No Elephants. And this is actually a book about feeling left out and not feeling included with friends. Have you ever thought that way before? I know I have. And so this says Strictly No Elephants by Lisa Manchev, Manchev. And the pictures are by Tai Hun Yu. And so I'm going to read, I'll read it, and then I'll hold up the picture. So this is the cover, and it's a little elephant with a little boy, and they go to the door, and it looks like they're maybe going over there to have a play date, but then there's a sign on the door that says, 
strictly no elephants. That means absolutely no elephants. And look, he's an elephant. So he's feeling really left out, right? Okay, let's see what happens. The trouble with having a tiny elephant for a pet is that you never quite fit in. If you don't fit in, that means little elephant probably doesn't know a lot of other little elephants. No one else has an elephant for a pet. And if you look in these windows, I'll do it like this, you can see the different pets that the children have. And nobody seems to also have a pet elephant. He's the only one. Every day I take my elephant for a walk. His is a very thoughtful sort of walk. If someone is thoughtful, that means they're thinking about you more, I'm having a little trouble here. That means they're thinking about you more than they're thinking about themselves. That's if someone's thoughtful. So this elephant is being thoughtful because at first they start out with her holding the umbrella, but then it looks like they, she, she has a, a potted plant that she buys. So then he switches over and he takes the umbrella for her. So that's being thoughtful. If you think about somebody else more than you think about yourself, you're being thoughtful. He doesn't like the cracks in the sidewalk much. I always go back and help him over. That's what friends do, lift each other over the cracks. So, there he is. The elephant says, oh, I don't know, I don't want to step on those cracks. I know some of you play that game when we're going out to the playground. So there he is, picking up his elephant friend. Oh, he's so heavy, carrying him over the cracks. So cute. Today, I'm walking my tiny elephant to door number 17. It's pet club day, and everyone will be there. They're getting all ready. It's so fun to get all fixed up when you're going to go someplace special. They're so excited to go to pet club day. And then there they all are, walking their pets up to the house where they're going to, they're going to the house where there's going to be pet club day. Come along, come along, little tiny elephant. I have to coax him the very last few feet because he's a little shy. It'll be fine, little tiny elephant. When I look up, though, there's a sign on the door. So he's having a little trouble getting his little elephant there. And they're so excited. But then when they get there, they see that very unwelcoming sign that says, strictly no elephants. It would make you feel so bad if you were an elephant, right? Strictly no elephants. There's even a little picture of an elephant drawn with an X through it. That makes it really bad. My tiny elephant leads me back to the sidewalk, not even minding the cracks. That's what friends do. They sometimes do brave and scary things. And they're just walking home in the rain, feeling so bad. So sad. They were so excited about Pet Club Day, too. Then they come to the park and they see a friend. Did you try to go to the Pet Club meeting, too? The girl asks. Yes, I say, but they don't allow elephants. The sign didn't mention skunks, the girl says, but they told me that they don't want to play with skunks either. They don't know any better, I told her. So they meet each other in the park because neither of them made it to pet club day because The club members didn't want to hang out with elephants 
or skunks. He doesn't stink, the girl adds. No, he doesn't, I agree. Hey, what if we start our own club? So here he's letting his elephant kind of sniff the skunk. See his little trunk there? And he's saying, your elephant does, your skunk doesn't smell. And we know elephants really nice. Let's start our own group of friends. Come along, I say, making certain that my tiny elephant follows me. Because that's what friends do. They never leave anyone behind. So they're all, when I open it up really big, you'll see that they're all walking together. That's an important message in life, to never leave anyone behind. And look, when they come into the opening over by the park, several people start coming around with their, let's call them extraordinary animals. Because having an elephant for a, t for a pet is extraordinary. And having a skunk for a pet is extraordinary. And let's look at all the extraordinary pets, okay? A giraffe, a narwhal, a porcupine, a penguin. <laughs> we can say that's extraordinary. Because if you went up to your mom or dad and you said, Mom and Dad, I think it's time that I take some responsibility and I learn to take care of a pet. And then your mom or dad might say, all right, well, let's think about that. Let's pray about that for a while and we'll see. What are you thinking? Would you like a fish? And you say, no. And then they say, would you like a cat or a kitty? And you say, no. And then they say, well, what about, are you thinking about a dog or a puppy? That's a lot of responsibility. And you say, no. And then they say, well, a bird? And you say, no. And then they say, well, what, what kind of a pet would you like? And you say, I would like a very extraordinary pet. That would mean you want a pet that most people don't have as a pet. You would want a giraffe, a narwhal, a porcupine, a penguin, or over here it's a little hedgehog. Could you really have those for a pet at your house? No, because at your house, that wouldn't be the right habitat for the pet. A habitat is the perfect place for the pet to live. And the perfect place for a pet, for a giraffe to live, is the jungle. The perfect place for a narwhal to live is the ocean. The perfect place for a penguin to live is Antarctica. Very, very cold. And the perfect place for an elephant would be the jungle. A skunk could maybe live in your neighborhood outside. And the perfect habitat for you is your home. We can play here, one of our new friends says. All of us. And they all walk together with all of their extraordinary pets. They walk to the park. I think their group could be called the Extraordinary Pet Club. So we paint our own sign and it says, all are welcome. It's a little tree house and it has a sign that says, all are welcome. So even some of the animals from the other pet club could come over and join their pet club, right? My tiny elephant will give you directions if you need them. Let's invite all of the animals. And then in this last picture, you can see how some of the doggies in the neighborhood are coming. And I bet the kitties will start to come. Now, cats and dogs would not be extraordinary pets. Those would be a good pets, but they would be um, more ordinary pets. If something is ordinary, that means you see it all the time. If it's extraordinary, that means you don't see it all the time. But it can still be really good. Because that's what friends do. They all hang out together. That was a cute story. <sighs> so 
sometimes we talk about um, at school, I think we've talked about this, the jobs of friendship or the tasks of friendship. If you say something's a task, that means it's a job. And one of the good tasks of friendship is making sure that people aren't feeling left out when they need to be included. So next year, we practiced that at school. We used to practice that a lot in preschool. We would say, I would say, and Mrs. Hamshaw would say to you, look around and see who needs a friend. Be sure you're including people and so that everyone feels welcome and everyone feels happy at preschool. And next year, you can do that too. You can look around your classroom as you're getting to know new people and say to yourself, who needs a friend? Who can I include that needs a friend? And sometimes you might be surprised. If you, if you look at friends like that, you might become friends with someone that you never thought you would enjoy, and you really, really do. Sometimes we get surprised at who our friends are. Okay, I'm going to read another story. It's called Freckles and Willie. It's one we read in February at school. I'm reading it again because we really liked this story a lot. Do you remember what happens in it? Let's, okay, all right. Freckles and Willie by Marjorie Kuehler, illustrated by Miriam Winborn. And remember, Freckles and Willie are a boy and a dog, and they've just moved to a new state. Looks like it might be in the state of Maine or South Carolina or something like that, where there's water. And Willie's a little lonely, and he already loves Freckles as his best friend, but he's a little bit lonely. And so let's see what happens. Do you remember? Okay. Freckles was Willie's very best friend. He was always there when Willie needed him. If Willie was lonely, Freckles would bring him something to play with. If Willie was cold, Freckles would curl up on his feet like a warm pair of slippers. If Willie was sad, Freckles would lean against him and make him feel better. Because Willie was new in town, he had no other children to play with, so he always played with Freckles. So they were feeling especially close because they only had each other right now. Here's the next picture. Okay. Early in February, Willie woke up and looked at his calendar. Valentine's Day was less than two weeks away. I'll have to make a surprise Valentine for Freckles, he said to himself. It has to be perfect. It can't be too big or too small, and I'll draw dog biscuits around the edge. Willie worked all day on the Valentine. Finally, it was finished, and he hid it in his closet. Remember this? Later that week, another new family moved into town, moved into the house across the street. A girl who was Willie's age came over to make friends. Hi, my name is Jane. I'm Willie, said Willie, and this is Freckles, my dog. Jane sneezed. Achoo! I'm allergic to dogs, she sniffed. Willie patted Freckles and put him down in the basement. You'll only have to stay here for a few hours, he said but Freckles began to bark. So Jane, it's okay, of course, for Jane to be allergic to dogs. But I think we talked about it as a class when we read it in school that she, she said that in a very rude tone of voice. Sometimes it's not what you say, but it's how you say it. And if she had said, oh, I'm allergic to dogs, I'm so sorry, is there, can we put him somewhere? That would have been way better than, I'm allergic to dogs. Really rude, okay? All right, let's see. While Willie and Jane played cards, Freckles barked louder. Does he always bark that loudly? Jane asked. No, said Willie. He just really wants to be with us. I can't stand that noise, said Jane. Let's go to my house to play. So for the next few days, Willie went to play at Jane's house. Freckles stayed home and waited for Willie to return. Now that's okay too if they play somewhere else. Again, 
It's how she's saying those things. She says, does he always bark that loud? Really rudely, I can't stand the noise. She could have said, you know, he seems really sad when he hears us playing. Would you like to come to my house and then your dog won't feel sad? Do you see the difference? The result is the same. They still go play somewhere else, but she's being kind to him about his dog. When Willie walked in the door later after coming back from playing, Freckles wagged his tail. Willie seemed to have changed a little. Jane says your tail looks like an old string, said Willie. Freckles brought his favorite bone to Willie. Jane says that your bones smell, said Willie. Freckles put his head on Willie's knee. I can't play with you right now, said Willie. I have to make a valentine for Jane. Freckles went down to the basement and lay on the pillow in the dark. Have you ever gone and laid in the dark? Are you just feeling sad and you kind of want to be by yourself and think thoughts in your head? And I think that's what Willie's feeling, or that's what Freckles is feeling. Because for some reason, Willie is feeling like in order to be friends with his new friend Jane, he has to be mean to his dog friend Freckles. And he doesn't. He can be friends with both, right? Willie worked hard on Jane's Valentine. He made it out of red construction paper and aluminum foil. He pasted ribbons, lace, and stars on it. On Valentine's Day, Willie left to take Jane's card next door. Freckles followed him outside. No, Freckles, don't follow me. You have to stay home, said Willie. Jane doesn't like dogs, remember? Freckles barely wagged his tail. He whimpered as Willie went over to Jane's house. See, he could have said that nicer, right? Again, it's not what he said. It's how he said it. He could have said, no, no, Willie, just, uh, Freckles, just stay home for a little bit. I'll be right back. When Willie rang the doorbell, Jane answered the door. Hi, said Willie. I brought you a present. Yuck, she exclaimed. You made me a valentine. Ew, I don't like Valentine's. And she slammed the door in Willie's face. Willie blinked, his eyes filled with tears. I'm going home, he said. So, his new friend Jane, she might be a really good friend in a lot of ways, but she needs to work on her attitude. If, you're, if your attitude is how you say and do things. When Willie got home, Freckles wasn't waiting for him. Freckles, called Willie, but Freckles didn't come. Willie looked for Freckles in all of his favorite places, but Freckles wasn't in any of them, not in the basement, not in the kitchen, not even under Willie's bed. He looked for Freckles beneath the lilac bushes and even in the garage. Freckles, he called out. But Freckles didn't come. Remember when we read this together in class and several of you were really quiet. Well, we were all really quiet and serious because we felt so bad for Freckles. And you were saying different things like he's probably hiding because Willie hurt his feelings so much. And then somebody else said, he's hiding because he's afraid that if he comes out, Willie's going to be rude again, because that's how Willie has been. Willie's had a bad attitude towards his dog, right? So Freckles is thinking, mm, I don't want to be treated badly again, so I think I'll just stay where I am. Okay, let's think for a minute. Do you remember where he finds him? Okay, let's see if you remember. Suddenly, Willie remembered. He had made Freckles a valentine. He ran inside to get it. When he opened his closet door... There was Freckles on the floor, curled up in a little ball. Freckles, shouted Willie. I've been looking for you all over. I thought you had run away. F Willie had to drag Freckles out of the closet. Freckles just stayed in a little ball. He opened his arms, but Freckles did not jump into them. He just lay there 
and put his head between his paws. Oh, Freckles, said Willie. I'm sorry I was so mean. Freckles wagged his tail, but just once. I'll never desert you again, said Willie. Then Freckles, Freckles wagged his tail a little harder, twice. Willie reached for Freckles' valentine. Look what I made for you, he said. Willie tied the valentine to Freckles' collar, and Freckles wagged his tail so hard and so many times that his whole little body wiggled. He barked and barked and barked with happiness. This valentine is for you, said Willie, because I love you. Freckles jumped up and licked Willie all over his face. So, Willie apologized, and Freckles forgave him. Later, while Willie did his homework, Freckles leaned against him, and when Willie went to sleep that night, Freckles curled up on his feet like a warm pair of slippers. Okay, now, I have a, a question for you. And you can answer it on Marco Polo if you want to, okay? The question is, we know Willie and Freckles are going to be together forever, and they worked it out because they're owner and dog, right? And pet. And then Jane is the new friend who, mm, you know, she could be fun to play games with and do things with, but she struggles with being rude and having a bad attitude. So... If you were Willie, what would you do about that? Because you're new and you want to make friends, but Jane has been really mean to your dog and then now to you. How would you solve that? What would you do? Would you want to stay friends with, with Jane? Or what are some ways that you could... Decide. I don't have a right answer. There's no right answer. I just want to know what you all are thinking. Okay? All right. I think we're out of time for now. I want to do one last thing. And then I'm going to do it again on another tape, too. But I want to do one last thing. Because it kind of has to do with friendship. This next month in May, I was really sad when I learned that we're not going to be coming back to school together. So some of the things that I wanted to teach you in May, I'll do through video like this or at our, through our at-home learning that we've been sending home to your moms and dads. But one of the most fun things that we learn in May is a song about friendship. And it's about being friends with children, not just people like us and where we live, but learning to be friends with children from all over the world. So it's called Hello to all the children of the world. So I'm going to push this back because you're going to need to see me a little bit better. I'm going to go, I'm going to go really slowly at first and we'll sing it together a lot over the next month. And you can play this tape again too. It's really fun. So I'm going to be saying hello, but I'm going to be saying hello in different languages. And I'll try and see if I can download the words to the songs through our at-home learning next month so that you'll be able to see the words too, and your moms and dads can help you with them, okay? Okay, goes like this. One, hmm, maybe I'll get a drink water, hold on. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Hello, bonjour, buenos dias. Wait, let me start again. <laughs> I'm sorry, start again, ready? Hello, bonjour, Buenos dias, good day, guten tag, knishawa, ciao, shalom, dombre dien, hello to all the children of the world. We live in different places from all around the world. We speak in many different ways, though some things might be different, we're children just the same, and we all like to sing and play. Hello, bonjour, buenos dias, good day, guten tag, 
Kanisha wa Ciao, shalom, dombre dien. Hello to all the children of the world. There are children in the desert and children in the towns and children who live down by the sea. If we could meet each other to run and sing and play, then what good friends we all could be. Hello, bonjour, buenos dias. Good day, guten tag, knishawa. Ciao, shalom, dombre dien. Hello to all the children of the world. Hello to all the children of the world. Hello. Okay, let me go over the motions with you really quick. All right, ready? It goes like this. Hello, bonjour. So you're just kind of like waving. Hello, bonjour, buenos dias, good day. It's good day. It's from Australia. Good day. Guten tag. Kanishawa. And you put your hands together like this. Kanishawa. It's from Asia. You ready? Ciao. Shalom. Dombre dien. Hello to all the children of the world. So you're just moving your hands like this back, which is your elbows up, and then. Okay, ready? And then when you say we live in different places, you just kind of put your hand like this. We live in different places from all around the world. We speak and you put your fingers up like this, and then do like this. Speak in many different ways. Though some things might be different, we're children just the same. And then I just make fists and swing your arms down beside you like as if you're holding hands with friends. And we all like to sing and play. Hello, bonjour, buenos dias. Good day, guten tag, knisha wa. Ciao, shalom, dombre dien. Hello to all the children of the world. And then it's children in the desert. So you do a little serving hand again. There are children in the desert and children in the town and children who live down by the sea. If we could meet each other to run and sing and play, then what good friends we all could be. Hello, bonjour, buenos dias. Good day, guten tag, knisha wa. Ciao, shalom, dombre dien. Hello to all the children of the world. You bring your hands up. Hello to all the children of the world. Hello. And with that, I will say goodbye.